You're listening to the AID Network. Hey, friends, it's that time again for a DKNG show. We're doing it on a week off because the boys have a sale. And you want to definitely head over to DKNGstudios.com where you can get their great new three-print series for a limited price for a limited time. That's right. Between now and October 14th, that's this Sunday, sunsets down, sale goes away. You can get their three new great flower prints. What's the name of the series, Dan? Ventana. The Ventana print series for <laughs> reduced rate and you'll be rewarded with a three free pin set from our friends over at pingamestrong.com. That's correct. Three prints, 18 by 24? No, not that big. 16 by 20? Not quite that big. 11 by 17? Mm, just a tiny bit smaller. <laughs> How big are the prints? 11 by 14. 11 by 14. That's a great size. Oh yeah. That feels <laughs> just right. That feels <laughs> just perfect. Ah. Oh, Put a window where you wish you had one. Put a little bit of that Southwest flair if you have none. Or put it next <laughs> to the real thing. Who knows? We're not going to turn away anybody. Get all three prints for a reduced rate as well as a free three-pin set. That offer goes down end of day this Sunday, October 14th. So if you're sad after your team lost, cheer yourself up with some prints. Yeah. <laughs> or even if you live in a Bin Laden-style bunker, add some <laughs> brightness to your walls. <laughs> <laughs> Friends, I don't know how many times I have to tell you people about customizable 48-page pocket notebooks from who? You know who. Jack Prince. That's who. Pocket notes are now available in three customizable styles. One's going to be perfect for you. There's the classic pocket notes or the larger pro notes and the new reporter style flip notes. Oh, just flipping through my notes. Never mind me getting the scoop like Billy on the beat. 100% your branding with your choice of three interior page styles, blank, grid, or line. Get 500 as low as 70 cents each. Choose from our standard cover stocks or be unique with craft, black, or pearlescent paper. Get started on your pocket notes today. What a great item to sell or to give away. And it's an item you'll actually be able to use for yourself. Visit jackprince.com slash circle of trust to save even more. Let's get started with today's show. And don't forget to become a member of the Circle of Trust to hear the entire thing and to be able to follow along with all that we do. Coming to you live from the Saul Rosenberg Studios, broadcasting worldwide into all ships at sea, here comes another action-packed episode of Adventure in Design. DKNG show. That's right. I got their names right this week. 19 episodes, and I finally figured out who my co hosts are. Nathan <laughs> Goldman, Dan Culkin, welcome to the DKNG show. Hey, hey. Good to be back. What's up? As you guys might remember in podcast land, I did the first five with a guy named Fred and a dude named Steve. And it was incredibly awkward because they could never figure out who was DK and who was NG. But we figured it all out. We've now got a very, very efficient show. On the show today, we're going to talk about a big release that the guys did. And I always love when you guys, you're, you're busier than most. You stay booked. Advertising agencies love you. The, the music world loves you. Small companies love you, like you're just getting work from every direction, but you know that it's important that you love you. <laughs> Self-love. Right? Oh, yeah. And no matter how many times Rick from marketing comes, hey, guys, um, just wanted to see if you could do something for my major automobile company that's been around for a hundred years we've been working on a car for the last seven years and we wanted to know if you guys could do some design work for us in a seven day turnaround <laughs> <laughs> that describes it perfectly yeah yeah that's like not just 
car clients. That's music industry. That's every industry for mm-hmm. some reason. We've Everything's only, poorly planned. We've only been working on this for seven years. <laughs> yeah. No, they people run their businesses the way that I have nightmares about showing up to class on the last day of the semester. Yes. I'm like, I didn't even know there was a test today. Why haven't I been studying? What's going on? <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's the marketing plan. You know, we figured out how to make this new frame and, and this, this great engine, and there's so many new pieces of technology inside the car. Hell, it'll even drive itself under certain conditions, asterisk. But we just were thinking the other day, actually last Monday... We should probably make some advertisement and let people know that we've spent seven (laughs) years doing this. Do you think you guys could help us? (laughs) Oh, you you have other projects going on? That's weird. I know we haven't worked together in 18 months, but I kind of thought we paid you really well the last time and you were just kind of hanging out waiting for old Rick from marketing to give you a call. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So do you think that there's parts of this like conversation that are happening to other people other than designers? Like people that are in charge of the artificial intelligence and are like, we need this car to drive itself. We have a week. Can you figure it out? (laughs) See, that's the thing I can't ever put my finger on the pulse of is that are we the part of the industry that's last in the process Mm -hmm. that normally is outsourced and you kind of don't know when the car is going to really be done because after the car, the frame's been built, it has to be manufactured or, you know, after it's designed, it has to be manufactured. Then they have to make sure everything can go back together. And and then they have a completely finished automobile, but legal has to go through it. And they have to figure out what their risk is. Because you know, if yeah. you sell somebody a car, you need to make sure you give them a product that won't kill them. You know? So... Somebody's building a car right now. I can yep. I can yeah, hear that's, <laughs> hey. yeah, there's there's a wall there, going up in my backyard right now. I love now. it. I love it. A bunch of guys with red hats. I don't know what that's about. Well, I have a bunch of guy uh, with no shirts on next door to me that are, are doing some work. So, hey, thank you, Donald Trump, for this big economic boom. There's just construction everywhere. We're rebuilding America. So many great <laughs> jobs. It's going to be just so great. Even the whole world knows that I'm the best superior leader. They said I'm the best dictator America has ever had in its history. <laughs> that was kind of the reaction I was expecting. Uh, <laughs> Trump and Nixon there. It's kind of perfect. <laughs> All right, so... I, I don't know why we're the last. Why are we the last to know? Like, yeah, I mean, I guess I think you bring up a good point that while the prod, product itself is still in development, maybe they feel like we can't jump the gun and why would we make an advertisement for an incomplete thing? But yeah, it feels like you should be going down both roads at the same time, Yeah, starting to at least think about the advertising, even if you don't have the final yet, drop in the final car, final legal info at the end. But I don't know. For some reason, that foresight is not there. I don't. I mean, maybe I don't give design enough credit, but I also kind of feel like it's a luxury. It's not really that necessary. Like, you can release this car and it will still drive without marketing. Well, and I also think, too, the the level of marketing that you guys are at and many of our listeners at home are either at or aspiring to get to is let's not joke ourselves. We're not the Don Drapers of the industry, right? We are the guys that Don Draper would hire. And I know that breaks yeah. your heart, Juan Draper. But <laughs> the No, we're that guy in the back room uh, yeah, that was like drawing stuff, yeah, with the beard and then got fired and <laughs> yeah. yeah. The guy who's that's, always that's high. Who we are. But you know, the big agencies that are actually doing the T V spots, they do get a lead time. And in fact, I'm not supposed to say this, but I'll say it anyways. I've been told stories before where they get the frame of the car with resin inside. So that if you take a photo of it, you can see the top of the seats and you can see the dashboard and maybe the top of the steering wheel. But then six inches below the wheel line, it's just completely flat. Like they literally just made a resin mold of what the top, you know, eight inches of the car looks like place that inside of a frame that has zero engine on it, just the wheels Mm -hmm. roll so you can roll it on and off of a truck. So they do get the lead time. But if you think about it, we all fit in the nooks and crannies of 
the marketing push, the promotional push. And I have a feeling that those are the things that get the scrap ad budget and they're kind of fast and loose. Like we're underperforming. We need to get more attention. We're overperforming. We have more money. Let's create a program. I feel like that's where we all fit in. Yeah, but also, yeah, you're right. And I also think that design is a bit subjective when it comes to pricing. Like metal costs a certain amount of money and a factory will charge a certain amount. Especially with these tariffs. (laughs) These tariffs are making it cost more than ever. I, I know so many of your listeners, they don't want jobs in design. No, they don't want jobs in design. They want to work in steel mills like their grandfathers. Right. Now it's starting to sound like uh, Ren. I know, I Ren lost it. I, I, I lost it. I lost you it. idiots. <laughs> you idiots. You want to work in steel mills. <laughs> now it sounds like Triumph the Insult, dog. Yeah, it's, it is totally that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was going to say, I, I do think budget becomes a big part of it, too. And you can tell sometimes when we get hired, especially with some of these bigger uh, clients that maybe they're getting to the end of a quarter or yes. the end of a fiscal year. Burn off money. Like w- we didn't mm-hmm. realize that we were going to have budget, but now that we do, let's do some type of campaign. You know, the, the music business equivalent to that is college gigs. I've seen mm-hmm. friends that are on tour that were making $2,500 a night get paid $25,000 for one night doing the same amount of work at a college because the college is like, oh, we have this budget. For $50,000 a semester, if we don't spend it all, they'll give us less. So they just throw it all on a concert. And that's when the biggies of the world are like, well, you know, a stage, renting a stage costs five grand, really costs 1500 And sound system costs 12 grand, only costs 2500 And they just <laughs> fucking build every expense as high as possible. Everybody gets crazy paid. And then parents are like, what the fuck's with this tuition? Why does it never go down? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you know you you guys bring up another great point nathan how many times and everybody listening knows this how many times have you got the project from rick and marketing seven day turnaround but it just has a whiff that the agency probably fought the parent company for a long time to figure out what the proper budget was. So weeks got lost in negotiating out on the golf course. And then maybe they floated it over to a couple of other designers or somebody touched it and backed out. So by Mm -hmm. the time you get this project, it's had so many hands all over it. It feels kind of sticky. And they're just, yeah. they're rolling over to you like it's the greatest opportunity ever. But you're like, how long it's have you guys, failed. <laughs> yeah, how long have you been kicking this fucking deflated yeah. soccer ball down the alley for until it landed in my lap? Yeah, it feels like Sloppy Seconds it's, uh, in some circumstances. Which is yeah. the name of my new studio, sloppysecondsdesign.com. <laughs> Yeah, um, my girlfriend Megan works in advertising and she experiences this a lot where there's so much stopping and starting and trouble just getting a client to sign on to something that once they have the go ahead, it's like, yeah, we need this commercial in seven days. And I don't get how they do that because then it's like building sets, hiring cast and crew and all that shit and trying to work with some of these timelines that we do for a poster or something, which seems like way too fast for us as well. But I don't know. Yeah, these companies get into these sticky situations where they they kick the ball for way too long, and then now they're out of time. Which always mm-hmm. made me think that when The Apprentice, I don't know why I keep coming back here. But when, <laughs> Damn it. Okay, here we go again. <laughs> yeah, do it. <laughs> but when the... Nathan, you're fired. But when... <laughs> when you're fired. <laughs> <laughs> but when The Apprentice was around... It was kind of funny because so many of the people that were the contestants on there was Big Dick Rick from marketing who thinks he's got it all figured out. I've been in business for years. I can get results. But what Big Dick Rick marketing figured out on the show was that his whole way of getting through a bind was hiring you guys to do seven-day turnaround. And it was the executives in seven-day turnaround mode, and they failed miserably. However, I always thought if you put a designer on there or somebody who actually does the seven day turnaround work that doesn't just delegate. Cause there's, there's two types of workers in this new environment. Sorry, steel mill workers. That's not one of the equation, but we now live in a world of people that are building and people that are 
passing the buck, right? So there's there's the delegators and there's the designers. And design could literally be the guys that are building that wall behind you right now. But the delegators are the people that fire off the emails, take the phone calls, and then just go, when can you get it for me? When, where's the invoice? I need this. I need this. I need this. And their whole job is just to talk to 20 of you a day, check it off, check it off, check it off, while we yeah. actually have to go do the work and do some of their job too. Yeah. And there's definitely um, kind of a good cop, bad cop thing that happens yes. where clients will be like, look, I know I would love to give you guys six weeks for this, but I got my boss breathing down my neck. He mm-hmm. says he needs it tomorrow. <laughs> what can you do? No one's ever responsible. Nobody <laughs> is. Nobody is. It's the same as like, yeah, I really like the four door Range Rover. Let me go talk to my manager and see what the best deal I can do. There is no manager. Yep. You just go <laughs> he goes back into there. an empty room. <laughs> you, you just go back there and tell your buddy, like, you see that uh, Patriots game last night? Man, Brady's looking good. 30, 41, still throwing it. And then goes back and goes, oh, yeah, my manager said we can't really move on these numbers. Oh, okay. Well, think, <laughs> tell the manager I said thank you. <laughs> but that's why I love, you know, you can never really control your own calendar. Because you don't know when Rick from marketing is going to show up. You don't know when the seven-day turnaround is going to come around. And sometimes the money and the opportunity is so good that you you take a swing at it. And that might be the week that you decided to do your new Ventana prints. Yeah. That's usually how it works. (laughs) So even though you've probably wanted to get the prints done a while ago or your own series, it's the thing that always gets put on pause. But I always respect that you guys somehow find a way to fit this in because you know... That if you just go from seven week turnaround to seven week turnaround and you don't keep one figuring out your own design style along the way and what makes you happy and keep sort of creating that 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 fan base, right? Like part of the success of DKNG is that so many other creatives love your work, love your career, buy the stuff, like you guys, see you speak at the conferences. Those are the junior designers that tell Rick, hire DKNG. In in Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. Those are the little birds. It's true. Hey, friends. Today's episode is made possible by our shared friends over at PenGameStrong.com. Today, we'll be talking about some pens that the boys made by using mm-hmm. PenGameStrong.com. Do you love their service or what, guys? Oh, it's so great. We can get exactly what we want without all the work of reaching out to the factory. Yes, the PenGameStrong.com, they, they've created thousands of pens and they know all of the different ways that the machines work and will help you get your artwork just right for the perfect product. I myself this week, I just released the AID Network Freedom Eagle on sort of a antique silver. It, it literally looks more like a coin than it mm-hmm. does a pen and I absolutely love it. One cool thing about the pens that we just uh, released is that they're on ultra-thick backing cards this time nice. and that's new for pen game strong so they've upgraded the thickness on the cards that's great and that is a service that they provide for you where you can get them penned in cards so literally merch mm-hmm. just shows up for you ready to send out to your customer or lay out on your table exactly. holidays are coming quickly don't forget to get a pen order going to make some extra holiday scratch or they're so affordable to make no shipping no hidden fees when you use pengamestrong.com that you can make an amazing send out to all of your clients like, hey, thank you for a strong 2018. Can't wait to work together next year. This is something you should be doing, and you can do it affordably with PinGameStrong.com. And when you do it, tell them AID, DKNG Show, uh, Circle of Trust. No, 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 no. Don't, don't even mention DKNG Show. <laughs> I need all these. Take I need these credits. Send them. <laughs> tell them Old Man Bricky, the old man in the desert, sent them your way. That's PinGameStrong.com. Mention the show. Save. And it's true that this took a long time to actually prepare, even though it's only three prints. <laughs> but three really, yeah, really great prints. Thank you. And there's um, definitely the projects that get in the way that, I mean, we always put this on our calendar, so at least we know we're aiming for getting it done at some point. But there are those projects that come up that we really can't say no to. Right. Um, yeah. But then there are the other projects that are like, well, we weren't looking for this type of work in the first place, so let's say no and prioritize our internal stuff. But yeah, it's a tricky line there to decide what's worth delaying this for versus what's worth walking away from. Well, and yeah. I would I would tell anybody who's who's listening that is, you know, three or four years in and you're not doing the type of work that you want to do, 
it's probably not the industry's fault or not a lack of exposure. It's probably your own fault because you haven't taken the time to hire yourself and show the world your true potential. And this, this isn't me trying to be a dick. This is me giving you the only the insight that I had after years of wondering why I wasn't getting the work that I wanted. And then somehow or another, I fell backwards into doing some stuff for myself. And that's when it all sort of changed. So you guys have been around long enough. You've known enough people. You've seen the success in your own sort of way that you work to know that even though that these can be put on pause, put on play, put on pause, put on play, there is a really, really importance into always finishing and to make sure that you keep a couple yeah. times a year putting out your own series. Yeah, I think um, as long as we can come out with a solid series of multiple products each year, I feel like we're showing ourselves that self-love that you're talking about. Yeah. I'm looking at this um, timeline, though, and we we made initial sketches for this series back in April, <laughs> which is crazy to think about. It doesn't surprise me at all that it took six months to figure all this out. And then, much like Rick and Marketing, we're now talking about it. Uh, the sale went up October 8th. That was this past Monday, and it'll run till uh, Sunday, October 14th. Each print comes with a free pin, and if you buy all three prints, if you buy all three prints, you get the entire three pin set. Pins, mm -hmm. prints, prints and pins. And if you buy all three of them now, you get a discounted rate, correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Like, so, like $30 you off. Can, yeah. Yeah, which is um, serious. It's 60 bucks for three prints and three pins if you get them all together. Which I'm seeing in there, you can keep what you need for yourself, re-gift the rest for the holidays. Perfect exactly. time to get that holiday shopping going. But it doesn't surprise me that it, it took you guys six months because I know that these have been done now for a while, but just like Rick and Marketing and the unnamed car company, you had to send all of these over to your printer. You had to wait mm -hmm. to get in his schedule. You had to wait for mm -hmm. them then to show up. I mean, this was going to be an episode we were going to do last week. And I, I'm releasing this on a week that I'm technically off just because everything got slid <laughs> around. So yeah. we're no better than Big Dick Rick and Marketing. Totally. I yeah. mean, we had we didn't have preparing the release of this up until, you know, last week on our calendar. So we're <laughs> totally guilty of the same thing. We're not like building an advertising campaign seamlessly side by side with the production of the actual product. So let's mm -hmm. jump in. You guys decided to do three window treatments. Fair to say that they're all sort of southwestern Mexico inspired, correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I kind of feel like we could walk around the unnamed neighborhood in Mexico where Dan's parents have the vacation home and find all three <laughs> of these windows. Are these actual? Yep. Are they? Are these from real windows? Uh, no. I mean, a hodgepodge of what your favorite things. Totally, it's just hodgepodge of like favorite tile that I've seen and like favorite wall colors and window shapes and just kind of combining it all together. Well, let's jump in and look at the Vera Cruz uh, design. Uh, it has the three little pots at the bottom. It has the tile work that goes around. Um, I think I really, this was the first one I remember seeing. And I loved the grain that you put in it. Uh, nobody loves the texture in this print more than Denny Ascar. And that's because it <laughs> makes it a lot easier to print for those of you who don't get that joke. I also love yeah. that there's a hidden Mickey in this one. <laughs> you got a prickly pear? <laughs> yeah. I love that bottom right hidden Mickey, but it, I, I love, I know that you're using the, the, that big flood of that. What is that color? Is that like a mustardy cream or an orangish cream? Yeah. Mustard cream. Yeah. Mm, I could go over some mustard <laughs> cream right now. Yeah. Sounds good. Mustard cream filled mm. donut. Looks a lot like, <laughs> looks a lot like my skin tone. Uh, but I, I love how you're using that. To There's also a little bit of Dracula in there. That's what I was missing. <laughs> I want the mustard cream. I, I'm never going to die superior leader forever. But I do love the highlights that you that you you worked in there. You know, And I think that using that color on the left side of the cacti, a lot of people don't know that's the proper term, uh, mm -hmm. But it creates a f that creates a fun highlight, and then you're doing the um, the shadows on the far right hand side. And so, even though this is a very fundamental, like basic geometric style illustration, with the distress, the highlight, the shadows, you've actually added a lot of complexity into something that's 
minimal. And I think that is the sweet spot when you can do minimal design, but show people that you're capable of doing more. That's when minimal design really pops and makes smart people happy versus looking like it's a limitation of abilities. Yeah, I think the um the fun thing about this kind of design is that yeah, you limit the the amount of detail and you limit the um the amount of colors, but my mind wants to show dimensionality, wants to show shadows. Right. And how do you do that with like all flat colors? So, this was like a challenge of basically cutting things up and, and giving that illusion of three dimensionality, but I love it. Um, have all those restrictions and tied to it, which is essentially like design, just like all these parameters built up and doing the best you can within that. The other one that we have here is the, now this is where you guys just start kicking old man, Bricky in the dick. It's the <laughs> Osakia. <laughs> yeah, named after Osaka, Japan. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Osaka, Japan, home of the cactus. <laughs> yeah, there's no, there's no possible way you'll if ever you guess this one. If you look closely, you can see a sushi chef inside the window, <laughs> working away in there. <laughs> Konnichiwa, our doors are open to you. Um, no, I. Oaxaca. Re- is it Oaxaca? Yeah. Oaxaca. You guys are yeah. dickheads. Come on, man. Why do you do this? Oh wait. Oh wait. X A C A. It looks. It looks nothing like how it sounds. Oaxaca. Oaxaca. Yeah. Oaxaca. Oaxaca. Chokes on me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So with this one, we have the wood shutters. I love the four tile print up at the top. Is great, and then the complimentary. I guess flower pot that's hanging off the bottom of the windows. Awesome. I, I love the shadow on this one. And I think that the the real pro move on this one is the the simplistic nature of the actual window panes, right? Like you did the split line of the yellow and the green, and then the green goes into the shutters. So you've really done a good job of sort of making me feel the depth of that. And and this gets into the moment of bicycle spokes. Ignore them, illustrate them, do them how they really are, which is a total fucking mess. Put a pattern in there. Like it, it's one of those times where you have to make a design decision. And the window panes, I think, is the crucial part of what's the proper amount of detail, what's the proper amount of minimalism. Yeah. I mean, it occurred to us that this is the one of the only this is the only window that doesn't have like curtains. But if those were included, it would have been a little bit too busy. You know, we want uh, enough space to feel like your your mind is focusing on the right thing, which right. is like the cactus and the, the shingles. And also like the the railing, um, we originally designed this so that it was in front of that box, yeah. but it was just too busy. It was yeah. just too much shit going on. And I think also the uh, wrought iron handles and some of those details had more depth to it. And we kind of flattened that down. So, yeah, I mean, a big part of this process was... Um, you know, removing things and kind of distilling it down as much as possible, but still giving you the sense that these are real materials. Pro move, uh, again, if you look at the edge of the shutters, everybody knows that a shutter is going to have, you know, a, you want a good inch and a quarter thick plywood, right? Because you're going to close these shutters in, in the worst scenario, right? Because obviously this home looks over the ocean, and we want to see that view all the time. But when the ocean fights back, you want to close these shutters. I love how on the left-hand side, we're using our uh, the paper color to be the highlight. But then on the right, we go to that mustardy color. Mm-hmm. But then there's also a tonal difference on our hinges. You know, so we've, we've created this. Basically, uh, we have taken all the colors allowed with overlapping and, and with single hits and, and we, f- we determine, you know, well, if this is paper color on this side, then our next value up is mustard on the other side. And, yeah. and that, when you create that style guide and you stick to it, that's when you can do really good storytelling with less and start making those smart design minds or smart design decisions. Like for example, everybody look at the top five tiles at the top far right you'll see that you use the actual green to show like a little bit of weight over there because if you use the red, that's not going to work because of the tile color. And if you use mm-hmm. your black, that's not going to work because it'll get lost in the shadow. So you you made the smart decision to frame that with the green, which does a great job. Those are smart, subtle moves that make this look sophisticated and not simple. Yeah, and that little green sliver also helps to represent a bit of a reflection onto the wall yeah you know because it's kind of facing a little bit 
the tile um like trimming like the little embossments around the edges uh was a bit of a challenge just finding like what colors are appropriate to show and where the light source is but as simple as it is i mean there's like a lot of complexity with just making those right color choices that's what this is all about is how can we tell as much story as possible with as few lines as possible sort of the the whittling it down and then let's keep a very very pulled back color palette and make sure that every color does its absolute best to work with the others now possibly my 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 favorite one is the oh god (laughs) (laughs) all right think of um jalisco (laughs) <laughs> it's very close yeah it's not a ja it's a ha Jalisco so. there you go yeah. Jalisco <laughs> like Simfico ah look at my beautiful window I do cocaine here cocaine and I look out into the ocean <laughs> this is my cartel yeah. window it's a drug lord's house for sure <laughs> for sure I mean, there's that Mexican vampire again <laughs> <laughs> I want to suck your salsa blood <laughs> Uh, All right. I really love the use of verde in this print. <laughs> huh? Yeah, you got huh? it. Fuck yeah. It's actually pronounced verde. Verde. <laughs> I love the verde in your print. You can see my Dracula face in this fern. <laughs> Once again, you know, we're using that that orange, rusty orange color here on the edge of the window tile, the green on the other side. Like, there, like there's a moment where... The red outer tile, the the top circular part, you the, the the brilliance of this print is when the red gives away to the mustardy yellow and then that gives away to the paper. That is a pros pro move on using the limited color palette, but to tell the story of depth and design. Um one other thing you kind of mentioned in the beginning, but you were talking about the textures and all these little pinholes. Yep. First off, big thanks to you because we're using the Mark Bricky patented uh, torn edges technique. There we go. Um, but another thing that we like really went back and forth on the, on the end here was uh, how this texture is going to look when it's overlaid over just direct paper versus like other colors. Yeah. And like in certain circumstances, it does make sense for those pinholes to um, have a uh, yellow underbase right, underneath right, red or something right. like that. Yeah. A, a, so a, an amateur would not do the underbase. Yeah. And not think about oh well if everything has paper through it then it looks like bad silk screening. Yeah. Exactly. And it also becomes super harsh like yes. this print. I mean we went through a lot of different versions of testing what overlaid best but for example with this one where you have that very dark brown color inside the window. Yeah. If those pinholes poke through to the paper color, it just is like blindingly harsh. And all of a sudden you stop looking at the artwork and you're just looking at these pinholes because it's the highest contrast thing on the print. So it took some experimentation to figure out how to do this texture without it, you know, becoming the focal point. Yeah, because you were talking about a difference of texture for storytelling and to give it like a warmth, like grain feel to it versus making a punk flyer. And, a, and yeah. a, a punk flyer has snow in it where it just it goes across the whole thing. It doesn't care what it hits, but you can tell that this texture has been trapped perfectly into each part of it. And, you know, when people just take texture and lay it over something, that's not design. That's just stacking things on top of each other. But when you mm-hmm. take texture and you lay it over something and then clip it for that shape and then put a texture in the shape next to it, like I can tell that you guys put a lot of time in the drop shadow of these tiles to get just enough speckle tone in there to tell the story, but not so much to make it feel punk or vintage or, you know, this is a distressed window. This drug cartel is getting ready to get busted. That's why it's so distressed. <laughs> yeah, and it's crazy, like, using different styles of textures, how much it will change that yes. personality. Yes. As, same way of, like, using two different typefaces or something yeah. will drastically change the feeling of something it, and it, it's a lot of you know I, I know you guys are probably doing this in photoshop but for me i or in illustrator i do a lot of this work in photoshop so for me you know it's putting the texture in creating a mask 
and then just really playing the game of reduction and just airbrushing it out and, and you know, going back at, you know, looking at it when it's postage size and bringing it back and just, you know, really, really working it. Uh, I love the, the drapes, the curtain treatment here. That's a hard thing to keep simple. You know, that can become yeah. overly complicated really, really quick. You know, in it, it's like totally drawing fabrics like drawing the human hand. You know, it, it can it can get away from you really, really quickly. Yeah, those drapes um, originally were also including the paper color, so it had like a three tiered kind of system going on. That's just nope, way too three nope, D looking. Yeah. It's way too bright. It made it look like it was outside the window rather than inside the window. Right. It, so um, this is that's what where I, we landed. Dan, please stop talking. It's my show. Uh, so, anyways, uh, <laughs> this, this is what I drapes <laughs> <laughs> you gonna do the mark the billy move uh, this is where you guys are really great and and this is something i was never able to fully grasp is there's a pl plenty of times in this print where you show three dimension an example the outer curve tiles you see that drop back so that we realize that the siding is you know four or five inches, maybe six inches back so this potted plant can sit on that little ledge. So you're showing how that's recessed. And so there's enough indication in there that it's happening. But other spots, you don't worry about doing that exact amount of depth. You know, like some of the tiles, we don't see exactly the depth between them or how much the window sticks off the side of the building. Like that's not really fully explained to us so i always mm -hmm. find that you guys just do enough of that to make it feel like it has depth but not so much of it that it looks like a cad drawing yeah yeah it's a balance because if you went true literal like shadow on everything you're then getting away from design yeah and you're just it's all about the technicality of how like the light hits it and and sometimes the technicality it takes away from the story. It, it doesn't make for good yeah. design. You know, you, you're ending up with this weird shadow or this weird way where two things go together. And geometrically, it's 100% sound, but it doesn't tell a good visual story. Exactly. My vibe on this is that it didn't need the gecko. Oh, okay. That I just, well, I felt like it was smart enough without it. I could tell you that the main reason behind the gecko is because each print had an animal so it felt like we were telling a story within the series i thought you were going to say is that it's product placement because you guys have been working with geico with geico. your money <laughs> um there's an animal all right butterfly okay your story's checking out and oh, bird. i really hope we put one on the third one bird. Oh, shit. Bird. all right all right bird. you're right you're right a uh, few yeah it's there it's okay. there still you know what it Do you is feel better about the gecko <laughs> maybe it's just my hatred for gecko because it just looks yeah. like a bad spring break tattoo <laughs> yeah yeah it does look like a tramp stamp <laughs> like that bird is sophisticated and makes me feel happy about it the butterflies makes me feel like oh i'm gl so glad that we like called away from the world and went to Mexico for the week. And just, I'm noticing that there are things called butterflies, but the gecko, it's just like, what's up? I'm nineties alternative <laughs> dog. <laughs> you guys like smash mouth too. <laughs> well, that we're trying to take back the gecko. Oh. This is part of, this is our first yeah. step. I love it. Well, I'm all on board <laughs> for taking things back. So that's great. The three print series is available on sale, uh, till Sunday, October 14th. Make sure you tell them in the comments, I love the gecko. If you get these, you also get the the pin set that was created for free if you buy the, the big super pack, and the super pack will save you $30. Uh, go ahead and buy a little something for yourself and start thinking about Christmas now. Let's jump over to these pins. Um, God, I'd like to get into making pins, but I just don't know where to start. Do you guys have a suggestion? Uh, Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty simple. Yeah, what do you do? Um, we just found these pins, actually. They they fell off the back of the truck. <laughs> oh, but I bet that truck it just came from PinGameStrong.com. That's right. PinGameStrong.com. <laughs> We're the best in the business. Don't get pricked by anybody else. Come to PinGameStrong.com. Listen, folks. 
They're a sponsor of the show. They're a sponsor of AID. They're a partner. And this is what I love about the advertisers that I choose. I love advertisers that elevate your career. If you use pingamestrong.com, you tell them that you listen to Adventures in Design. Tell them the DKNG show. Tell them Circle of Trust. Hell, even drop my name. Old Man Brickley, the guy that lives out in the desert. He sent me to you. If you do that, you're going to save. And make sure that you remember that because that's the important part for him staying here, right? So I get you guys a hookup, like DK and G, you guys get a hookup, correct? Totally, yeah. Greg definitely hooked us up on these. That's right. Fam, dog, fam. So take care of this. Go to pingamestrong.com. Pins, I got pins for sale right now. I got this this for sale right now. AID yeah, Net- I saw that. AID Network badge. Look at that. Very nice. nice. It's for sale. Go buy one. Pins are so easy to sell. People love them. They're inexpensive. They're easy for you to ship. They're fun. It's not a big commitment. And they save no. lives. Enough pins, you're never getting stabbed. <laughs> <laughs> True. Yeah, if you um, have chain mail of pins all over your body, <laughs> it's basically protection. I mean, technically, you are getting stabbed if you like lay down in the jacket. But yeah. that's more of like a Karma Sutra bed of nails. Yeah. It's a it's a therapeutic stabbing. Yes, it's acupuncture. Yeah, there you stabbed. go. I said karma sutra, which is <laughs> karma sutra is <laughs> that's getting pricked in a different way. Oh yeah, that's <laughs> hey ew. All right, so let's do this. Let's look at these pens. So are these the three cactuses from the se- series? Yeah, yeah. So there's an agave. Um, there's a saguaro and then there's a, um, Mickey mouse one. <laughs> <laughs> I do love that hit Mickey. <laughs> I love that hit Mickey one. And then what, what you guys chose because your hashtag no outlines, um, I've changed the, the, that terminology you use, but you have to have outlines in a pen. So yeah. is this a rolls gold that you're using? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's very similar to copper. Yeah. Um, if you have like masculinity issues, you can call it that. But it's rose gold, which is technically a tiny bit more on the magenta side. It's a little bit uh, lighter yeah. too. So then we it's have a subtle difference. So we have the rose gold, which is the actual like metal that the pen is made out of. That gets stamped down, and inside of that, we have the acrylic fill of a, like a dark forest green, and then a white. Yep. I find these to yeah, be we, I find this pen series to be fascinating in I see it working in two ways. Hear me out. Obviously everybody listening is going to get them from the big sale. I don't know that somebody pulls out their credit card and buys a cactus pen online, but there's no way when you guys do local shows like Renegade and in you know, the holiday season, or if you're foolish enough to do that other one on top, the top of the building, there's no way that people can resist this in real life. They are pretty nice looking in real life. And yeah. if you're a Southwesterner or if you're out here on vacation, like if you're at a live event and you're just looking to spend a little bit of money, this thing sings to you. Mm-hmm. They're the best the in idea. IRL for sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's the really really good. And when I you gave me a, a a series of them, um, when you know when they were prototypes, I'm always on the no. <laughs> and I brought them home and I, I gave them to Beth. I'm like, hey, Dan wanted you to have these, and she was like, oh my god, these were made just for me. And immediately <laughs> she broached them right out of the gate, bro. She she's wearing them with pride. So I really feel like that, that this is like, do you sit back one day and go, oh, I got an idea for the perfect pen, cactus. I mean, it's definitely been done before, and I know that like cactus pins are like popular, but in a different so, way. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of what we've seen out there that exists already is in a much looser, playful yeah, kind of like way. Hand drawn, and obviously yeah. we don't do that, so we just went with the very <laughs> structured, clean lines version. I say that uh, this the is opposite of fun when it comes to design. <laughs> no, 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 no. You, you're selling it wrong. This is cactus for the rest of us. And I feel like that for the smart man, this is the cactus that you want <laughs> on your blouse. Yeah. I like what you said earlier. We make smart people happy. Like, I feel like that could be our new catchphrase. Wow. Yeah. Even a broken clock's right twice a day. I, I exp- Hey, what is that on your table? Do you have a, a, a 360 camera? What Nathan? are you talking about? 
What? What's that little soft pack on your? Is that a camera case for a, a 360 uh, camera? No, it's my headphones. Oh. I thought it was. You got so excited. I thought it was this thing. <laughs> I thought it was this little oh. shell that has to go in the camera because it can't ever lay down. No. No. It's a uh, Bose. Oh, okay. It look, I was just two D. I thought we might yeah. be camera bros for a bit. All right. Anyways, head over to pingamestrong.com. I'm telling you, man, pins are such a great thing to get into, a fun thing to get into, and the sponsors that I use on this show will always help you make more money, tighter, better, better margins, and grow your business. There's nothing wrong with getting a pin. And by the way, you want to get in early now. Get your holiday pins going. So yeah. like don't drag your heels. Also, don't drag your heels on buying pens for me. All right, so we have the Cactus Pen series, and we have... And yeah, I did want to just tag on that. Um, that was definitely part of the discussion from the beginning when we started talking about the Windows art print look with the succulent plants. It was like, oh yeah, that translates to pins perfectly, so this whole series kind of makes, makes sense to us. Yeah, it works together really, really well. Hey, friends, to listen to the entire episode today, we've got two hours of content of the DKNG show coming your way. To hear it all, make sure you become a member of the Circle of Trust at AIDpodcast.com. Did a fly just fly by your face? Oh, yeah. I I'm just surrounded by fucking insects. <laughs> I love that. I, I love that it's it's October and I see on in Instagram people wearing winter coats and, and turning on fireplaces, and I'm still pulling like a fly just went in my drink. Mm -hmm. How's that happening? Mm -hmm. And no, Dan and I don't live near a trash dump. Unless you think L.A. is a trash dump. Yeah. You guys look like pig pen over there. <laughs> <laughs> Cloud around your head. <laughs> Easy man who lives in fall all year long. <laughs> Make sure you become a member of the Circle of Trust to hear more banter like we just demonstrated effortlessly for you. And also to follow <laughs> along with all of the artwork that we talk about. Everything that we mentioned is, is in there posted with the full version of the show. If you sign up today, you get 18 other episodes of the DKNG show as well as tons of other interviews that me, Dan, and Nathan have done throughout the years. I think I, last year when I did Dan's Giving, I think I looked it mm -hmm. up and Dan himself had been on like 45, 50 different episodes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of content in the, in the past and there's going to be a lot more content in the future too. Oh, future sell. That gets a dad mm -hmm. dab. I love that. All right. <laughs> I, I think that what you guys have done in, in a very clever way is you've taken two really sort of pedestrian topics a, a window and a cactus and mm -hmm. you've applied a level of design and thinking where you actually make me excited about a window and a cactus and i think that's a really <laughs> good thing for people to look at in their lives that it's not about coming up with the billion dollar idea right like Every character you design is not going to grow up to be Mickey Mouse, by the way. Happy early 90th, Mickey. But there are things that you love. And one of the things that I did really well with is whatever reason, when I'm on the phone with people, I love drawing, drawing dumb objects. And mm -hmm. I got into a pattern where I was just drawing cheeseburgers all the time. And I actually made a series. I made a, a four-color print. There were four up, ice cream cone, soda, fries, and cheeseburger printed a stack of them we cut them into four and they just crushed it wasn't anything that anybody like rushed to buy online but live in an event people were like ah, i want that cheeseburger eight by ten for the kitchen or i i want mm -hmm. the, that milkshake <laughs> and it just was like sometimes if you just put a lot of tlc into yeah. the smallest of ideas you can really make people think about design in a different way because you're like oh wow i've never seen a usb jump drive pen <laughs> yeah yeah, it's not so much um, what you do, it's how you do it. Absolutely. Really. It's a new way that you move it. <laughs> All right, let's move down the road list here. Ranger <laughs> Ruth. <laughs> Did you like that segue? I, I mean, I just want to like just do a little tally for all the different voices we've gotten this episode. It's like, I think we're on 18 or something. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a good time. Ranger Ruth. <laughs> You guys did Ranger Rick, what, two years ago? Mm, longer than that, right? Like three? Uh, yeah. So Ranger Dave has always been the oh, sorry. the main kind of um, mascot of Outside Lands. And, I mean, he's been around since before we started working with them, but right. we kind of made our iteration of him um, three years ago. And since then, it's become um, a giant sculpture and a costume character and... Uh, 
yeah, they decided they need a little bit more diversity for this year. Yeah, good on them for uh, realizing, hey, we need to cross the gender barrier with our, our mascotting. So this is for outlines f- or outside. <laughs> <laughs> this is for Hanukkah Steve. <laughs> oh, 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 don't get me started. <laughs> don't. If I stay it two more times, he'll appear. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is for Outside Lands, which is a music festival that takes place in San Francisco. Yes. Where at in San Francisco? Uh, Golden Gate Park. Oh, okay, cool. Cool, I know where that's at. All right, so yeah. this is a music festival that takes place over a weekend. Mm-hmm. And yeah, three days. Okay, and so you did Ranger Dave, which was something they had, but you guys, if I know this correctly, you were able to help them make Dave in something that was more branded, right? Like easier, like more of a character that they could just drop on things when they needed to fill a gap. Yeah, we kind of... Um, made a very iconic illustration of him and his face. That's how it started um, as a design element that was part of a whole grid of other elements. But then from there, they asked us to illustrate his whole body. That became something they used for wayfinding around the festival, um, merchandise, and then eventually built an actual Ranger Dave costume character who could walk around for photo ops and things like that. You guys go to the festival every year, correct? Um, For the most part. Yeah, yeah, most years. I didn't go this year, but I think we've gone three or four times. And when you go, what are people excited by seeing the characters walking around? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's definitely a draw for getting your photo taken. Um, and the characters also make appearances on the various stages to help, you know, introduce acts and things like that. <laughs> right. So, um, you know, it's a bunch of drunk high people stumbling around a park in San Francisco, of course, uh, they're going to be stoked when a giant puppet walks up to them and wants to take a picture. Uh, Dave's got a girl. Way to go, Dave. Yeah, Dave. <laughs> so what was the, what's the idea? Do you take, do you take Ranger Dave and try to figure out, all right, we've established a style guide here. How do we make a, a, a more feminine version of it? Do you start from scratch? Like, Where do you... Where do you start and where do you jump off to make sure that Ruth feels like she's her own thing and not just a clone of Dave? We just got to put a wig on Dave <laughs> and then you, and then we just put like two balls on his chest. <laughs> but and you did it though. I mean, it. the you did the hard thing which is you put enough breast on a character to show that it's a woman but you didn't over sexualize it. And as a designer that's ever had to do a female character, it's a hard road to go down to to figure out like what's enough to tell the story, but what's enough to not make it feel overly sexualized. Yeah. Yeah, it's a fine line. It is. Um, when you start doing this, I mean, when, when you start making something like this, you're like, oh, she's hippie. You know what I mean? Like, it's, Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, not just the boobs, too, but like the hips. Yeah. Like you don't want it to you want her to look feminine so that like her, you know, the small of her back is is thin enough but not too thin right like we're not like trying to like sexualize her in that way or her butt or hips are too big but enough that there's like some curvature there and we're dealing with like geometric shapes too so it's not as organic as you would want it to be sure i look at it this way um a pickup truck is how a guy's built it it's just kind of there it's sturdy some are older than others some are tougher than others it's how you you know i can make three shapes and I can make a pickup truck for you. But yeah. the female form is a Corvette. And it's a form of sophistication. And you couldn't give me three shapes and I can make you a Corvette. Like it, it, <laughs> it, there's a very specific style guide to it. And if those lines bend too much in one direction, it kind of gets away from what it is. And the next thing you know, you have a Camaro. So I, I, I know that this form and also with how weird women have been illustrated over the years, like this is a fun project, but I think a little bit of a st- stressful project because you want to hit that target without making too much side noise around it. Like the thing you don't want is this to go out and then the headline in the San Francisco newspaper is outlines fest or uh, outline. Fe- what is it? Outside, outside out, lands, Jesus. <laughs> outside lands get sexy. Like you don't want that article yeah. to get going, and it will quickly if if you don't watch your lines. Totally. 
Yeah, we kind of run into this with um, when we work with Benefit Cosmetics yeah. as well, We've because about this you before. know we're always illustrating these women that they want to be appealing because they're trying to sell makeup products, but at the same time. They don't want to be like, oh, that's like the slutty company with women that look like prostitutes. So, yeah, yeah, a lot of the discussion in these kind of projects is like it gets kind of tricky into what do all those curves start to look like. A lot of people don't know this, but I'm a consultant on Bratz, B-R-A-T-Z. I look at all of them and I go, "Mm, she could look scummier. Yeah, this just just uh, let's make that a little bit bigger there. Yeah, it's been one of my ongoing consulting gigs because I have a real vision for trash. Uh, so <laughs> these look fantastic, though. I mean, I I really like Ruth. It's cool that they did that, um, and I think you guys did a really good job of of bringing the two together. Like they look like they're from the same universe. Uh, Ruth looks fun that you'd want to rip a pick with. She definitely has enough that makes her different, but feels. Like she's from the same world. I dig that. Yeah, it's interesting to the political nature of how people reacted to this when they made the announcement. Yeah. I mean, it's just the way that internet works. There's always going to be trolls. But like, even when the point of this is to be uh, diversified, people found reasons to not like it. Of course. They always yeah, will. Like, and you know that when you get this game. Why is she why is she white? Or like why is she not in a wheelchair? Or why is she yeah, <laughs> like yeah, all this different yeah. stuff? Like what did you not do that makes me upset? Yeah. Yeah. And then you just blame it on Dave. Be like Dave dates his own kind and I've talked to him about it. He should <laughs> <laughs> He should open his mind. All right. It's not me. This is this is Dave's call. This is his girl. Um In the in the defense of outside lands, this is um representing loosely uh, an employee of theirs oh that's great that's great yeah. shout out to real ruth real ruth where do people where does the human in dave look out <laughs> i don't know i i gotta look at that fucking photo wait um, dave's not real <laughs> what are you talking about <laughs> is it through his mustache is there like a <laughs> does it go through the hairs uh hang on let me look at this again because obviously Ruth has her glasses. She can go through that. But <laughs> yeah, you guys got to stop ruining the illusion of this. I'm just trying to figure Is out Dave how Dave looking through the band done. on his hat? Oh, no, because look at where his shoulders are. You would have to have a huge How the fuck neck. is this guy driving this cart around and not killing everybody? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's trippy. <laughs> Dude, if He's you're looking like through that mustache... Neck. If you have to look through a mustache to see where you're going, that is dangerous <laughs> as hell on a stage. I don't get it. I never thought of it that way. Maybe That's they're real. Freaking me out. They are real. That's what it is. <laughs> That's the only solution. Well, there yeah. you go. All right. Also, on today's portion of the free show, they also did a graphic for Under Armour. <laughs> All right. It was good talking to you guys. Let's get into Until the circle time. of trust. Now, you, <laughs> you guys have been doing these infographics for Under Armour. Which I find to be a real fun type of design because it it's not only the graphic design, but it's the the info dump and trying to figure out a way to get everything just the data flow and then to illustrate around that, right? So you're you you make a ton of icons. But the icons have to be simple. They can't overtell the story. They can't be too yeah. complex. There's, do we use like little stems, like lines off of, of icons and badges? Like there's so much thinking in here. And when you look at an infographic that's, that's done and done well, like, oh, that looks easy. But if you've ever sat with a blank piece of paper in front of you. Oh, fuck. And notes from a client. And you start trying to do the data layout of how can I get all of this to fit in a certain amount of space? It is difficult. And one of my favorite things about USA Today is somebody there is insane and just makes tons of infographics. And they're always trying to find out a way. In a quick amount of time, you'd be like, okay, uh, airline safety is down. Uh, how do I fit four planes into this small area and tell the story and get the stats in and connect them and make it all together? Like infographic design is an intense flavor of design. Kudos to Nathan when it comes to um, the planning of this, because I feel like I have the fun part where 
I jump in and things are already kind of in the organized realm and I can polish things up and draw things. But to organize all this information, dump it into a file and like figure out where it needs to sit and how it makes sense in a chronological order. Not a fun job, at least from my perspective. Full disclosure, I have no idea what you guys are talking about because I'm still looking at photos of Ranger Dave trying to figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> I think he might be... No, it's... um. Is it through the mystery. eyes? I think it like, might be through the eyes, but then I'm also looking at where he's positioned next to other people and his eyes are so much taller than even a tall person. It would be I mean, insane to try to line up your eyes with those two small pen holes. Exactly. So part of me is thinking, like, is it possible the fabric might be somewhat translucent? Like, when you're inside, you can see out through the fabric? Oh. Or is he looking through the little crevice in the neck? But it's a very effective costume, because I'm looking at all these different close-ups of him, and I can't tell. There yeah, is. he's tall as shit. Yeah. Maybe it's underneath the mustache, like, through the fabric... On his through his chin, and it is that transparency. All right, this is yeah. He's Mark brings up a great point. He's driving with this thing, like that (laughs) seems looking under it. You have a mustache on your face trying to drive a car. That doesn't seem like a good idea. (laughs) This is when I wish that computers did what they do on like CSI, and I could be like, okay, zoom in, turn it around. Do the skin optic fiber now? Run the 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 run the the, the, the filter that shows me <laughs> substance transparency. Aha! We can see that this mesh is only a three hundred count, not a three thousand count. This is not Egyptian mesh. We can now look in further. Spin it around. I can see the guy inside now. Scan his saliva. I can see his chromatic buildup. Aha! This guy carries Crohn's disease. <laughs> <laughs> That would be cool. We need a CSI <laughs> enhancement this, capability. The shit that they can do when they zoom in on a photo is like oh, he it's has so a much cavity. easier on television. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think there was a last week tonight about how misleading that is. How like you know TV shows can figure out anything, so people expect that in a real life courtroom. And when they're like, "Yeah, there was no DNA match," like, "No, man, just click on the button on your computer. You can figure it out. I'm sure." You can look at the <laughs> DNA on the top of the Coca Cola that he was drinking. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So back to this. I think that this is just how Nathan sees the world. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Highly, I, uh, efficient and organized. Yeah. <laughs> I do enjoy that part of it, trying to look at the data and figure out how can it get all pieced together. And also just thinking about hierarchy and the right. idea of like, yeah, they just gave us 30 different pieces of information, but some of them aren't that interesting. Some of them have more to do with what the thing is about. So I don't know. It's kind of like when you're making a logo or something and you see how certain letter forms line up next to each other. You're like, oh, that's convenient. Let me take advantage of that. That kind of seems to happen in the infographics too, where there's certain things that fall into place and then you try to shoehorn in the rest of it. Yeah, but mm-hmm. the shoehorning sometimes is, is, is where it gets so difficult because you've got this yeah. beautiful layout. Where you're like, But this block of data, it belongs in this A group. Yeah. And there's no room for it here, you know, and, and it's also one of these projects when you go, people can read three point text, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> three points, not too small. You start having this conversation with yourself. It's like, you know, your rules like never go beyond eight, but you're like, people yeah. can read five point. Come on. Five, five is just only three away from eight. But yeah. <laughs> and especially something like that, this, they're like, well, we want people to look out on their computers and their phones and mm-hmm. there's a lot of stipulations. So yeah, there's definitely those moments where like, maybe if we just remove this piece of data, no one will notice that it's missing because, mm-hmm. yeah, it's kind of like you finish building something and you have extra parts left over and you're like, ah, I hope these weren't essential. Yeah, I hope this doesn't make my desk not stand up when I put the computer on it. I would like to say that I love the trash birds. <laughs> I love that. trash. I know. <laughs> Get out of here. Shoot. I love... The, the flying milk crate. Like, that's a really good way to tie it all in together. Obviously, you guys did, too, because you made that one of the very first things that people saw. Yeah, that was, yeah, that the, was uh, fun. <laughs> Even though that it's super depressing, logo. like, what this whole thing is about, it was fun to turn trash into animals. Absolutely. <laughs> all right, let's do this. Let's jump into the circle of trust where me and the boys are going to look at the... Um, 
video that you did of the floral prints, breaking them down, the process video. We'll look at that. And as you know, we, we, we push play and we push pause even more to break down all the tricks that are happening. And the boys have also done some new work for their Almanac core line. And I uh, wanted to ask them some questions about now that they've done, you've been working with that brand now for what, two or three years? Yeah, it's probably three. been at least three years, I think. Yeah. yeah. So you now officially have enough packaging under your belt that you probably know warning signs, things to look out for. There's things that probably look so easy in Illustrator, but at the plant, the guy's like, hey, man, there ain't no way this is wrapping around a can. So I'd love to talk about the you know the realistic expectations of what transfers over into three-dimensional product design as well mm -hmm. as look at the uh, process videos for the – Ventana art prints. Don't forget the sale goes to this Sunday, October 14th. Each print comes with a free pen. If you buy all three prints, not only do you get a massive discount, but you get the entire three pen set. And there's a deal on the pens as well this week. If you just want the pens. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> we, <laughs> yeah. I mean, there is a the deal if you buy the three pack. Right? Yeah. 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 Oh, don't. That's the deal. And uh, don't forget, the pins are made by our partners over at PinGameStrong.com. Make sure you head over there yourself. Get your pin game going. And when you do, tell them that you heard it on this show. Tell them that you heard it. And also don't forget that if you're in the Southern California area, you can see DKNG at the October 13th Pin Pal Palooza at Gallery Nucleus in Alhambra. And then they will also be at Adobe Max. You'll have stuff in the, the uh, Max store all three days of the event, but you'll also be at the Marketplace on October 17th. Exactly. Yeah. Do you guys get guest passes to that thing? It depends on how you were invited. This year, we don't have like full, do we, we don't have full access like we usually have as speakers. We have, we have one, you basically, for participating in the Marketplace, we're getting one. Um, full pass and then one booth oh, pass. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Adobe Max ugh, happened in LA. I've lived here for years, interviewed hundreds of designers, talked about their products thousands of times. I don't get an invite. Ugh, can't wait for that $120 to come out of my bank account this month. Ugh, fuck you, Adobe. <laughs> They're definitely going to invite you now. Oh, well, I've tried everything else and so I'm just going to play hard to get. <laughs> and by the way, I'm going to be over at Macromedia Sad Fest, where we're all going to <laughs> remember all the products that they took. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's get Corel Draw Con. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Paintmaker Pro Palooza. I'll see you guys there. <laughs> Keynote speaker. All right, let's do this. Let me fire up the old video here. I haven't watched this one ahead of time, so it'll be fun. Let me make sure that I turn down the volume so I don't annoy everybody. Ooh, four minutes and 58. This is going to be quite the ride. Yeah, three prints. We had to kind of <laughs> extend it a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in this opening shot, is this the print put into this photo through visual effects? Say that one more time. This opening shot, like the video's paused, and I see oh. the orange print um, on a desk. Yeah, so that's um, a mock-up that we made okay. to show what it looks like framed. Cool. Yeah. Well, we're also today we're going to talk about visual effects. Um, okay. Did you you green screened all of this and then built all yep. of these pieces of furniture and then put your print into it? Correct. Yeah. Exactly. Every we got single thing there is Pixar. On. They set that over. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right, I'm hitting play now. Ooh, turn that shit down. All right, DKNG logo. Ventana Art Print Series. All right, so we're starting with, what's this first one we're starting with, Dan? I don't have the names in front of me anymore. Uh, that is Jalisco. Ah, uh, Jalisco. All right, so we're Jalisco. looking at your loose sketch. We're seeing you go in and uh, lay the tiles. When you're laying the tiles, I'm seeing them slide back and forth. Y you do make one and just duplicate it, correct? I'm paused at 18 seconds, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's essentially how it started, but I think it kind of changed a little bit when the curvature came around. Okay. Um, but yeah, the point is just to make sure that all the tiles are the same width yeah. and then build from there. It is kind of a quick 
math problem to make sure that they all <laughs> like line up. Yeah. Uh, you can't just like start with your, the shape of the window and hope that the tiles fit. You have to kind of start with the tiles and make the window based off that. Yeah. That's what I'm realizing is that a lot of people would think about it the other way around, but you've got to yeah. make sure that your Lego works it's much easier to make the Lego first and then build the window versus trying to figure out whatever odd size. Like, well, how does, how does three point, nine eight five two divided by 16 i don't know <laughs> yeah just make it four and i'm sure it'll work it starts hard <laughs> it's not like an easy way to like go around it all right i'm hitting play and i'm watching you actually put together one of the tiles i paused at 25 seconds um we're seeing you actually put together one of the tiles do you each one of these tiles is pasted inside of a, a square and so then that's just what you move Yes, it's all within a clipping mask. Okay, clipping um, mask. A square clipping mask. So um, we're kind of seeing quarters of circles there, like on each corner. Yeah, and, brings it um, all together. This is where I kind of like decide on the rule of like how thick line work should be, yeah. which is represented in those like bevels. So it's kind of a nerve-wracking start because you're like, is this...